Hey everybody, Superfluous J here, doing the Early Career Moon Landing Challenge. I'll get into the specifics of the challenge in a minute, but for now, just look at my rocket. It's called the Moon or Bust, it's pretty simple. It's got four FLT-400 fuel tanks, which are the biggest available at this level. It's got one FLT-200 on the main rocket, which I'm going to disable here so I don't burn it until I'm ready. The Reliant engine is basically tailor-made for 18-ton rockets. One Reliant is all you really need for your launch stage. For our purposes, it does the bulk of the work getting out of the thick lower atmosphere, and also a good amount of work getting some sideways movement. But enough about the rocket, really quickly the challenge. The idea is you have uh, two unlocks, the tracking station and the mission control, so that you can get maneuver nodes and patched conics. Since I recorded the mission, the poster of the challenge has said that it's okay to also upgrade the astronaut complex, but I didn't know that at the time I recorded this, so I'm not going to be planting a flag. Note that as I drop the Reliant engine, we're about one minute from apoapsis. This is generally a good target for your gravity turn. As long as you don't get too far or too under <laughs> one minute from apoapsis, you have a pretty efficient gravity turn. Note also that the Terrier can barely keep this time. Any less than one minute here and we're going to have trouble making orbit. Now the tanks that are above the capsule here are specifically there to get us to the moon. The lander itself is stripped down to the bone to get the most out of its fuel and can actually land from orbit, take off again, and get home with just that FLT-200 tank and the Terrier. And because I needed to fit those fuel tanks on top of the rocket, I had to mount the parachute on the side. I mounted a battery on the other side because that parachute is going to make our rocket want to lean to the side, and the only way we can correct for that is with our reaction wheels, which means every burn will be using power. The Terrier doesn't recharge the batteries, and we don't have solar power yet, so we only have the electric charge we bring with us. Hence, the battery. One key to an efficient moon trip is leaving Kerbin at the exact right time. Now I've already set up my node to transfer to moon, but here I'm changing the time I depart until my moon periapsis is at its lowest. At some point it won't get any lower, so only then do I need to accelerate. Don't be happy with just a low periapsis. You want a low periapsis that also uses the smallest meters per second burn from Kerbin and you find that burn by adjusting your departure time. Now, at the moon, we plot our burn to slow down. Note we don't have the fuel. No big deal, we do have the fuel, we just locked that tank. So, I burn all the remaining fuel in the transfer tanks and toss them aside. Then I burn the tiny bit that's left in my circularization burn. I pick a relatively flat spot and slow down over it. Then I let myself fall, making sure to set the altimeter to ground level. I also find my shadow so I can do at least a bit of the suicide burn to stop. Our burgeons here are tight, but if Jeb dies on the moon, we are not going to be able to get home. Landing is simple. I do a victory spin, and because I haven't upgraded the astronaut complex yet, I launch off to the east. For a second here, I thought I was going to just burn all the way home, but I realize I'm not in exactly the right spot for that, and my margins, as I have said, are tight. So instead, I just make sure my periapsis is above the mountains and plot my return with a maneuver node. I set it up to meet Kerbin's atmosphere, but not be as low as I actually want it. Eventually, I'll want it to be about 30 kilometers, so for now, 45 is fine. And with the burn complete, we have 142 meters per second left. That's plenty to slow down a bit and make sure I have a nice, perfect 30 kilometer periapsis at curve. I set up a maneuver node to burn retrograde exactly 142 meters per second, and then move that node along in my orbit until it will make my periapsis equal to the 30 kilometers that I want. This is going to be my final burn. Upon hitting atmosphere, I drop my fuel tank, and now it's a simple ride down the gravity well to a soft water landing. Or a hard water landing. Oh well, we're home. That's the important part. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I definitely enjoyed playing it. If you liked it, please like it. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. I'm Superfluous J, and I will, as always, talk at you later.